you say the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we come into your house with great joy and happiness, Lord. Come on, just worship Him. Lift up holy hands. Hallelujah. We welcome you, Lord, in this place. Da -da. your presence in my life, this hope I'm feeling inside is coming alive, is coming alive, there is a miracle when you believe, reach out your hand, touch his presence once again. the various nations and territories of Asia. Shall we give them all a big round of applause? Surya Laka 
How many of you love the presence of God this morning? How many of you know that God's heart is for Asia and for all the nations of the world? This is the earth that He has created. We are the people that He has created to have relationship with Him. And we are going to believe God that all throughout Asia, the gospel is going to be preached, that the hearts of people are going to turn towards Christ. They're going to find new life. There is a miracle. When they believe and reach out their hands, they're going to find Jesus, the Savior. Hallelujah. Why don't we just live our hands, begin to pray in tongues right now. Let's just cry out right now, just begin to pray. Kudus kami berdoa Tuhan Engkau curahkan berkatmu Engkau curahkan rohmu Tuhan Dan membuka mata-mata kami Tuhan bangsa Indonesia Tuhan komunitas diaspora Indonesia Di seluruh dunia Roh kudus curahkan Engkau berkati mereka Tuhan di antara kekacauan dunia Engkau membuka mata kami Engkau Tuhan memperluas wawasan kami Untuk percaya Tuhan Akan ada mujizat terjadi Injil akan disebarkan Bangsa-bangsa dunia Akan diselamatkan Tuhan pakailah kami bangsa Indonesia Tuhan pakailah kami gereja-gereja Indonesia Tuhan pakailah kami komunitas Indonesia Di gereja sini habis Engkau bakar kami sekali lagi Engkau curahkan berkatmu Engkau curahkan mujizatmu Dan pakai kami untuk membawa hadiratmu Ke seluruh dunia Injil akan disebarkan Jiwa-jiwa akan diselamatkan. Gereja akan bertumbuh dan bertambah. Dalam nama Tuhan Yesus. Amin. Haleluya. Haleluya. Syuduri ala karabahari. Ya kita pray. Kita pray. Syuduri ala karabahari. Syuduri ala karabahari. 主啊今天早上我们为中国的教会来祷告主啊我们知道你爱全世界的华人你爱中国的华人主啊我们求天窗打开你说从凡夫求你名的就必得救主啊主啊主耶稣我们呼求你名我们求天窗打开我们求圣
just hold our neighbor's hands. So son, just come and just stand with me right now. Let's just hold our neighbor's hands on our left, on our right. Let's just begin to pray that revival will come in every nation of Asia. Let revival come, let revival come Here in Southeast Asia, in Singapore, in Malaysia, Indonesia, in Brunei Lord, let it come on Thailand, Vietnam, Burma, Laos, Cambodia Let it come on the Philippines, let it come on China Let it come on Hong Kong let it come on Taiwan, Japan, Korea, India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, Pakistan, Central Asia. Lord, let your glory come on every nation, on every people group, on every person, every family. the gospel. Asia will be saved. Asia will be washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is a global Pentecostal summit, so it's not just Asia, but all around the world. Why don't you just turn to somebody on your left, on your right, and say, a miracle is coming your way. Amen. Why don't we just take a moment, just worship God a little bit. Let's just Worship Him. Lord, we thank you for this morning. Lord, we thank you that you're here to meet us in a powerful way. Lord, we come from different walks of life. We come from different nations. From the front to the back, from the left to the right, those watching online. Lord, we just ask that the power of God we just search through our lives right now, spirit, soul, body. Why don't we just lift up holy hands, just worship Him. Shuri ala kara bahari ala kera bahari Shuri ala kara bahari Shuri ala kara bahari Shuri ala kara bahari I tell you the presence of God is here this morning Just touch the hem of His garment this morning Heaven is open Shuri ala kara bahari
your love, God. We thank you for your grace, Jesus. We open up our hearts to you this morning. Come, come and feel us, Lord.
I want to come and see the face of God, see the Harvest Church. Isn't it true that we are here for the audience of one, for Jesus and Jesus alone? I want to come and see the face of God. My deep need calls out to the deep kindness of your love. This morning, I don't know what you're going through, but the Word of God tells us that you can cry out to Him from the bottom of your heart. Your deep need cries out to the deep kindness of His love. And he says all through the day, Yahweh has commanded his endless love to pour over me. That's right, this morning, Yahweh, Jesus, the love of Jesus is pouring over you. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Let his love fill your heart. Cry out to him. More of you, Lord. More of you, Jesus. Just sing one more time without the music. Sing to him a new song. She got We just want to thank you this morning. We are able to come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord, that today we are not standing in the outer court. We have gone beyond the holy place. We have come to the holiest of all to commune with you. Like what Son has said is our deepest need to your greatest kindness. Lord, we are here to meet with you. Thank you for this time that we are able to stand on holy ground. 
we just commit the rest of our service into your loving hands. Lord, come and minister to us as we have ministered to you. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone say, Amen. Let's just give God a big hand. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a wonderful God we serve. Woo! One more time. Somebody make a joyful noise. Somebody go, woo! Amen. God is good. All the time. Give the Lord a big hand one more time. Hallelujah. How many of you appreciate all the musicians and all the singers for their amazing song leading this whole week? And all the choir, let's give the choir ministry a big hand. Thank you so much. Before you're seated, I know you shook hands and all that, but just go and hug five people and say, I'm so glad you're here in the house of God. I'm speechless today. Please be seated. Yeah, I'm speechless today because I. How many of you can really sense the presence of God? Wow, what a wonderful presence of the Lord. At City Harvest Church, we love to welcome all our new friends. After the service, don't be in a hurry to leave. We want to invite you to our VIP lounge at Hall 605 to enjoy a free complimentary cup of coffee. And our friendly greeters are also around to connect with you. Now, this morning, we have global scholars who are here for the Global Pentecostal Summit. It's a tremendous privilege for us in this room right now. We have some of the most eminent, brilliant minds in all the world, in the Christian world, here sitting in the first few rows. It's such a high privilege for us. Last week, I told you about F1 races. We all know the F1 drivers, but without the scientists, the engineers, there'll be no F1 cars. Without the scholars, we Pentecostal couldn't have done what we have done in the last two, three, four, five decades, seeing such tremendous church growth all around the world. So I'm gonna ask all the global scholars and also at the same time, all our guests from overseas, the THN pastors, the senior pastors, the head of denominations, uh, they're all seated in the first few rows. When they stand, can you give them a big welcome? Because they're so busy, and they took a lot of time. Some of them flew 30 over hours. You know, Pastor Juan and Pastor Edith, they came from El Salvador. They came probably 30 over hours flying here just to be with us. So at a count of three, when they stand, can you please give them a big clap? One, two, three. Please stand up right now, all the scholars. Yeah. All the way. Give them a big hand, a round of applause. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Recently, we had some really amazing praise reports from different ministries. Last night, we shared some. Today, I'm going to ask Pastor Lin, Pastor Maria, and Johan and Turning to come to the stage right now. And they're going to share a little bit, just the last four weeks, what God's been doing in all the different ministries of our church. Hi, Pastor. Hi, Hi Lynn. Church. Lynn, are you okay? Yes, I'm good, Pastor. We've all been praying for you, and we talk about that, but just tell us right now, what's happening with the Church Without Walls? Yes, yeah, so initially, we planned to reach out to 4,000 persons who are poor and in need in a community, but by the grace of God, you know, we are so glad that we managed to reach out to about 5,000 of them in the last 10 months. Yeah. Yes, God is so good. 5,000 poor and needy people. Yes, yeah. that's right. You know, and we are so thankful to you, church, because over the recruitment weekend, to about last month, you know, we asked for you to sign up to serve. So 132 cell groups and 313 individuals sign up to support so and to much. serve the Church so Without much, Walls church. Ministries. Yeah, yes, so out of these, we have nine couples who are keen to do foster parenting. Yeah. Yes, and you know, we launched our new ministry, City Angels, 
where we really hope to go in and help the babies and the children in need because they are not able to go home due to health and family issues. So we ask for 15 cell groups to help us in our Christmas project and 56 cell groups signed up. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you on behalf of all the babies. Yes, Thank and you even, so much. even 33 cell groups from the Chinese service signed up to join wow. us. Thank you so much. Many, oh, man. many of them, Pastor, many of them, you know, told us they want to go in, they want to cuddle babies. Yeah. Yes, and they really want to help these babies and children in need. Yeah. And so, for the remaining two months till the end of the year, we want to reach out to 1,500 more of those who are hurting out there in the community. Yeah. Yes, and you know, the team is really believing for God to use us, Pastor, you know, to sow the seeds of the love of Christ out there to those who are in need, to those who are hurting. So thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you, thank Church, you. for supporting <laughs> the Church Without thank Walls so Ministry. Much. Amen, thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who are our guests over here, we are talking about babies that for some reason, they are separated from their families and there's a lot of them and they're crying every single day because nobody is cuddling them nobody is holding them so we want to ask the mothers in our church to help so we wanted 15 cell groups and we got 50 over thank you so much thank you on behalf of all the babies thank you so much for loving them thank you thank you amen maria yeah, hi pastor <laughs> yeah yes. so what's happening oh dialect church yes. Wonderful. Pastor, uh, hi church, uh, I'm here to give you the report of a uh, press report for dialect service Fenghua Zai Xian Odis Concert. So actually this uh, outreach for the dialect speaking, especially for the elderly. So our el uh, oldest member, she is 93 years old this year, praise the Lord. So we took five months for the preparations and during this period of time, most of uh, the volunteers who serve in these projects actually met with different crises, family, health, relationship, but yet in the midst of all this, Pastor, it's very challenging, but yet we kept praying and doing what was needed. That is to abide in God's love and keep on holding on to His promises and kept serving the Lord. So praise the Lord, 556 elderly or 556 of them came and more than 50% first time coming to church praise the lord amen amen and many of our members they brought their parents grandparents and relatives and the concert was so amazing but the best part was the tangible life transforming presence of god and we have more than 33 of them gave their heart to jesus praise amen. the lord thank you jesus, Hallelujah. Thank you, jesus. Yes. Amen. amen amen so from the babies to the elderly and then tell us what's happening today is an important day you're, you're not like the rest of us in formal outfit. So what's happening this afternoon? Well, Pastor, in about a couple of hours' time, we yeah. are going to have our evangelistic come carnival. Closer, come stand yeah, closer, Yeah, we're going to have our closer. evangelistic... So that, so that the camera can zoom in a little closer. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Pastor, we're going to have our evangelistic carnival to reach out to the low-wage migrant workers here in Singapore, Pastor. Yeah. And uh, we are just so blessed because, Pastor, that they are all going to come and we're going to believe that many of them will be impacted, Pastor. Wow. Uh, at the event, actually, just beginning of this year, we actually did one similar event and over 2,500 workers came. You know, they, uh, we had uh, a carnival whereby they played games, they enjoyed themselves, you know. Uh, but most importantly, Pastor, we also reached out to them through, you know, using praise and worship songs in their native languages. Wow. And they were just so touched and they joined us and at the end, we gave an altar call and, pa and Pastor, more than 160 of them gave their lives to Jesus for the first time. Hallelujah! Amen! Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord! So what's happening? Amen. So Pastor, actually more than just the carnival, the outreaches, we also want to invite the migrant workers to our church this Christmas because we hope for them to experience... Hey guys, if they come, will you all welcome them? You sure? You sure? You promise? You're not going to, oh, stay away, stay away. No, you'll welcome them, right? 
Yeah. Amen, Pastor. Really, because we want them to experience the love and the fellowship of a church community, yeah. we also hope for them to have a place where they can encounter the Lord personally for themselves as well. Yeah. So, uh, this Christmas is not only going to be for the workers that stay in the dormitories, but for all our members, if you want to reach out to the migrant workers in your workplaces, please bring them this Christmas and yeah. we really pray they will encounter yeah. Jesus. I, I met, I met uh, Nick and Lillian uh, this week and Nick was saying that God gave him a burden to really reach out to Bangladesh, the country. Wow. And you know, of course, we're going to go to Bangladesh, it's part of Asia. But you know, we have so many Bangladeshis here. Yeah, we have so many Pakistanis here. We have so many from different, from South India, they're all here. And we can reach out to them. Amen. So thank you so much. You promise, right? If the migrant workers come here, you're going to be very gracious hosts. Turn your neighbors and say, you promise. Yeah. Now this afternoon, how many people are you expecting? We are expecting at least about 3,000 pastors. <laughs> 3,000, <Yeah>. 3,000. <laughs> yeah, these guys, they really talk big figures. Can we, can we ask one, one of the greatest scholars of our generation is Dr. Ivan Satyavrata from India. And he is the chairman of World Vision. So will you, Dr. Ivan, can you please come right now? Amen. <laughs> Dr. Ivan is the most amazing man. I, I got to tell you this, church, I got to tell you, when Dr. Ivan, uh, you know, he submitted his paper and I got the chance to read his paper. The first time I read it, I wept. It was so beautiful. Doctor, it was a masterpiece. It's, I just wept. I told Sun, I said, I said, this is, <laughs> this is too amazing. Thank you for being here. We love India. We love World Vision International. Can you please pray for the ministry this afternoon? 3,000 migrant workers, they're mostly from South, uh, South Asia, from India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, all that. They have never been to church. They are all usually on weekends, lock up in the dormitories. So we are organizing event, and they're gonna come and hear the gospel. Yeah. Shall we all stand up on our feet? Yeah. Will you please stretch your hands out to these yeah. wonderful uh, yeah. frontline uh, workers? Yeah. Hallelujah. Father, this morning, we have touched heaven. And Lord, you have called us not just to touch heaven, but we touch heaven so that we can change the earth in your name. Yes. And this morning, Lord, we thank you as we stand in your presence in awe of who you are and what you are doing through this great church. We thank you for a church that takes your word seriously, that loves the stranger, the alien, the foreigner. Lord, in a broken world which is pushing away the stranger, foreigner, the alien. Lord, this church is reflecting the heart of God. Yes. And how desperately the world needs to see before they hear, they need to see the love of Jesus lived out through our lives. Yes. And today, Lord, we pray for all these wonderful ministries, Lord. Lord, we really believe your church is the church without walls. Yes, Lord. Yours is the church with the open arms to those who are hurting in yes, our world. Lord. And so, Father, we thank you once again for the opportunity we have of praying for these dear ones. Thank you, Lord, for their zeal. Their heart seems to burn with a zeal. Their heart seems to overflow with a love for you that gives them a love for the lost and hurting in our world. Yes. And Father, we know, Lord, these lives that are going to come today, 3,000 more lives, they are going to be touched by the love of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And Lord, many of their futures will be shaped in a moment. Their destinies will be rewritten, Lord because they will touch the heart of God through your children. And so, Father, once again, we thank you for this great church. Thank you for this pastor whose heart is broken with the things that break your heart. Yes. And Father, we pray for every one of us here that every one of us, Lord, wherever you have placed us, may our hearts be moved yes. by the things that move your heart. Yes, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you praise for what you're going to do through the ministry this afternoon and the rest of this year in your precious and mighty name. God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Thank you. Praise God. Before you're seated, turn your neighbor and say, you promised to welcome them. You promised to welcome them. Yeah, amen. Please be seated right now. Hallelujah. Let's get ready to collect God's tithes and offerings. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, church, for praying. I know that God hears our prayer. Amen. Well, this morning, let's prepare our hearts right now uh, for, to collect God's tithes and offering. Now, church, you know what? Like what we hear, the, all the praise report. The amazing thing is that sometimes we ask for 15 cell groups, but 50 overcame. And then we, it's always beyond what we expected. It's really because of a demonstration of the spirit of generosity in our church. And this should be the hallmark of a spirit-filled Christian. Amen. Like what Psalms, in Psalms 51, verse 12, it's, the Bible says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. The Spirit of God is generous. As such, generosity should be a defining characteristic of every Spirit-filled believer. In the Gospel, just think about Jesus. Whenever Jesus tended to the needs of His followers, to the people around Him, He always exuded generosity. He was not stingy. He was not hesitant to give. Remember early in His ministry, at the wedding party, they ran out of wine and Jesus performed a miracle, turning water into wine. He didn't ask the people there, how much wine do you need? Or what specific quality are you looking for? Jesus did not pay lip service or just do the bare minimum. He graciously provided an extraordinary abundance of the finest wine. Then you remember the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. And the Bible tells us that everyone had more than enough to eat with 12 baskets of leftovers. This morning, let us imbibe in this same generous spirit that our Lord Jesus embodies. Don't be careless or mechanical in our offerings, but instead, let our offerings be marked by generosity. And God promises in Proverbs chapter 11, 25 that a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen? So church, are you ready to give? Now, if you have not tithed, I, I encourage you to give your tithe to God. 10% of all that we have belongs to Him. And as you prepare your offering, First, let me give you some instructions. Now, on the screen, you can see all the various modes of giving. You can give by cash, credit card, or make a check payable to City Harvest Church. Now, you may also scan the QR code on the screen right now or on the seat in front of you using the Pay Now app. Now, if you are giving in cash and need an offering envelope, just raise your hand. The ushers will come and serve you, or you can find one at your seat. Now, please drop these envelopes into the offering bucket as it pass you by later. So church, are you ready? Shall we pray and let's lift our offering to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your wonderful presence here. And Lord, what, an, what a privilege. And Lord, we can serve you. And Lord, as we serve you, we want to imbibe in the same spirit. Like Jesus, Lord, in all that we do, we want our service, our ministry, to be marked by the spirit of generosity. This is who you are. So Lord, receive our offering this morning. Receive our tithes this morning. Bless every giver. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Well, ushers, please serve the people right now. Church, once again, thank you for your generous giving. And may God bless you richly. Amen. Through my years as a pastor and counselor, I have seen in recent years how much mental health issues like anxiety, depression, trauma have so quickly become common and widespread in our society today. 
one such person that I almost lost to these struggles. It's a very, very close friend and talented friend called Jean. After many years of success and achievements in the local dance scene, she was suddenly paralyzed with irrational doubts about her identity and about her self-worth. She felt a sense of hopelessness about her future that crippled her completely. Here's Jean's story of her, how she walked through her darkness and how the Holy Spirit breathed new life into her. The wind of the Spirit set her free and brought great joy into her life. Truly, sorrow may last for a night, but joy always comes in the morning. Amen. Fighting, fighting to survive, fighting not to lose my mind, lost, crippled, alone. The gene that everyone thought I am, that gene is far gone. I just want to give up. I just want to end my life. There is no 
Speechless. That is the Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow. This morning I want to introduce our speaker. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just so moved. How many of you moved by that? Oh. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Professor. Byron Klaus served for 20 years on the faculty and administration of Vanguard University. During that time, he was the VP of Latin America Child Care. Thereafter, he became the president of AGTS, the Assemblies of God Theological Seminary in Springfield for 16 years. Now with 70 million members, the Assemblies of God is the largest Pentecostal denomination in the world and the fifth largest among Protestants. So Prof. Byron had trained a whole generation of pastors and leaders who are now serving God in practically every country on this planet. In 2016, he received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Society for Pentecostal Studies. Let us all stand out on our feet. This morning is such a privilege. This is the first time he's preaching in our church. So I'm very, very excited to introduce to you Oh dear, dear, wonderful friend, can you please give a big City Harvest welcome, <laughs> Professor Byron Klaus. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Please be seated. <laughs> um, I, have, uh, I am not uh, a person that is a given to hyperbole. Uh, I'm not one of those people who says to you, read this book, it'll change your life. I'm not that kind of a person. But when I simply say thank you, I have simply no words to express to you what I and I think my colleagues have experienced uh, over this weekend. Uh, I work very hard not to be speechless, but I'm pretty close right now. Uh, I have uh, attempted, I, I sat this morning and I said, I, I have to find, I gotta find a way uh, to encapsulate what I've experienced so far since I've been here uh, over this weekend. And here are those words, excellence, offered to our Lord in the power of the Spirit. Excellence offered to the Lord in the power of the Spirit. And we just saw an example of that in front of us. 
this, uh, to use the arts this way is just an unbelievable uh, expression of excellence to our Lord in the power of the Spirit. Now, I've been watching uh, City Harvest Church for over a year online. For me, it's at 7 o'clock Saturday night, and it's actually the way I've been preparing for the Lord's Day for over a year. I watch the service and uh, then prepare my heart. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a pretty good way to prepare your soul and heart for the Lord's Day rather than getting mad like I usually do at my football teams that, that lose all the time. <laughs> but much better state of mind when I start the Lord's Day. And the thing that I have been able to see as I have watched online is I have this, this sense of I sense through the screen, through my computer screen, I sense expectation on the heart of thousands of people. And I watched over a year, I, the first time I saw it, I said, this can't be real. No, this, this can't be real. This is just the superstar Kong, he, you know, he just, over a year, I'm telling you, I, I sense that through the screen. And you know what, I get here and it's absolutely correct. There is an expectation of the fact that Jesus is in this place. And with that expectation, God is going to meet people. Now when I say that, particularly in light of what you just saw, Pastor Sun's friend who uh, in a story was told through this dance, I am, I am going to tell you that right now what I'm going to preach I had no idea what she was going to offer today. Because though this congregation comes with the expectation that God's presence can transform lives, I want us to look at a story today found in John chapter 5 of a man whose anticipation was at the opposite end of the spectrum. He had no hope whatsoever. Now the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, are a corporate answer to the question, what is God like? And Jesus, who is the clearest picture of God, his life is recorded authoritatively in the Gospels. And in the Gospels, you do not see abstract concepts or things that only the scholars here can understand. What you see is an answer to what God is like as Jesus interacts in the lives of people, people who are broken. So as we read this text, and as you listen to the gospel proclaimed today, I pray that you will get an answer that is clear about what God is like. So we're going to read John chapter five, verses one to nine. I don't want to do something just a little bit different. I grew up in a household in which my mother and father were both preachers. The only way I knew, uh, I knew who was going to preach on Sunday was who got up on the, on the pulpit. My dad and mom, I never knew who was going to preach. But regardless of who got in the pulpit, we always stood before my mom or dad preached and we sang a song. We held our Bibles high and we sang the song, the Bible stands though the hills may tumble, it will firmly stand when the earth shall crumble, I will plant my feet on its firm foundation for the Bible stands. And I categorically believe that when a preacher stands before you to proclaim the word of God, he or she has no authority other than what is proclaimed from the word of God. Any ideas that they may have may be nice and inspirational. They are not authoritative. So if we want to be deep into the word, we need to believe that the Bible stands. So another thing that my parents always did was they said, I want you to stand in honor of the reading of God's word. So I'm going to ask you to do three things this morning. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand in honor of the reading of God's word. And when I'm done, I'm going to say, this is the word of the Lord. 
and you are going to respond, thanks be to God. Won't you stand with me for the reading of God's word? So this is the word of the Lord found in John chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five roofed colonnades. And these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been a long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm going, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, get up, take up your bed, and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. This is the word of the Lord. Lord Jesus, I come to you today as your servant. The Bible stands and I will stand on the Bible today. I will stand on this account of your healing a man who had been lame for 38 years. I pray by the power of the Spirit that you will walk through the halls of City Harvest Church and may you find the Bethesda's that are represented here today, and may you walk into the middle of those pools, and may you say to brothers and sisters, rise, take up your bed, and walk. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. You may be seated. So I'd like to look first at these, uh, the first five verses. Uh, it's a description of the pool of Bethesda. It says it was a place with five colored colonnade, co roofed colonnades. Uh, in Jewish life, ritual washing was a big deal. And this place, the expectation was that if you came to this place, that you might be healed. There was the belief that at times an angel would come and as it says, stir the waters and the first one who got in would be healed. This had been added to by the fact that Israel was now under the occupation of Rome. They brought their deities, they brought their beliefs, and they had also seconded this particular pool for their own deities. So in this place are people of a variety of beliefs, but all of them have one thing in common. They are desperate. It says, there was a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, paralyzed. This is a pe place that people came of last resort. It was a place of tragedy. It was a place of lament. It was a place of last resort. It was the last place you went. It was the last and lowest point. So if you are asking what God is like today, follow Jesus to the lowest place in society. And there you will find him, bringing hope to people who have no hope, bringing healing to people who don't want healing, as we're going to see in a minute. This is the God we serve, the God we serve who walks into the pool of Bethesda. And then we see that Jesus asks this man a question. It seems to be that the proper answer would be either yes, sir, or no, thank you. But with the answer that this man gives, we see what has happened to someone who has been an invalid for 38 years. Not only is this man obviously not walking, it says he'd been an invalid for 38 years. He had been an invalid longer than most people lived during that time. But his response to Jesus 
is neither yes or no, a simple answer, but it is this pained response. His answer tells us that the pool of Bethesda was not only a last resort for him, but it was the only secure place he had in life. There he was at the edge of possibility. There he was at the possibility of being healed. But his answer tells us that he is secure in that impossibility. He has lived in pain for so long it has become a prison to him. And when Jesus asks him the question, he cannot even answer. His answer is, wah, 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 wah. His answer is pained. His answer is essentially, I've lived in this place for so long. I've been disappointed so many times. Please don't ask me to be disappointed again. This man reveals a description of so many people in this world today all kinds of tragedies, all kinds of things, results of decisions they've made and results of decisions that other people have made for them. And there they are in a prison, not only physically, but most importantly for this man, mentally. Now let's look in eight and nine at the response that Jesus gives him. He doesn't respond with a rebuke. He doesn't say, you ungrateful person. Here I am, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm asking you, do you want to be healed? Do you know how many people want to be healed? And here I ask you, and all you do is wah, 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 wah. He doesn't do that. He doesn't say, well, that's an interesting response. Let's have a conversation. Let's dig deeper into your pain. Jesus says, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. You can read it in the original language, it says the same thing. (laughs) Get up, dude. (laughs) Take up your bed, and walk. This is not a time where Jesus has conversations. It's not a time to draw out a person. He knows that this man is stuck in his head. He has lived in a prison of his own making in addition to the fact that he has physical tragedy that he has been experiencing for at least 38 years. This is the nature of God we see most clearly in Jesus Christ. Jesus comes into our worst nightmare and does for us what no one else can do. There is no amount of self-help. There is no amount of conversations. Jesus breaks the bondage of this man's mind. For 38 years, for the first time in 38 years, he stands. Can you imagine what that must have been like? Now, I sit watching sports, not too much on Saturday night because I watch City Harvest Church, but I sit, and I sit for two hours, and I get up and I can barely move. I got to sort of unlimber. Imagine he has not walked for 38 years. Imagine the kind of atrophy in his muscles and his bones. And in an instant, by the power of the resurrected Lord, he stands. Imagine, imagine what happens. Now, not only that, not only that, this guy had no possibility of looking into the future and seeing hope. No possibility. None. He lived in a prison where future was not a category. And in that moment, Jesus Christ, God incarnate, speaks to him. And all of that prison breaks. And he stands. And he walks. That's the story. That's what God's like. (laughs) He walks into our lowest spots and says to us, do you want to be healed? And he asks that question not as a simple yes, no. But he asks us a question because in most cases, there are layers of things that need to be healed. So here's a question for all of us. 
do you want to be healed? The immediate answer is, of course I do. What kind of crazy question is that? Look at my circumstances. You can name your dilemma. If I could have people stand here, name your dilemma. We get really good at it. We describe our dilemma really, really well. We like our story, but we're imprisoned by our story. Will you leave that place that you've created for yourself to survive and enter into the space of fulfillment and hope offered to you by Jesus Christ? I won't argue with you about your personal strategy, a tragedy. I don't know the depth of that, but I proclaim to you today the one who does. If he sought out a man in the place of hopelessness who had been an invalid for 38 years, he knows your address. He gives a statement of clarity. He says, pick up your mat and walk. And those words penetrate this man's mind. It jumpstarts him into clear patterns of thinking. Now their initial patterns of thinking, we're going to see in a minute as we look at the rest of the text, he, he, is, he is running around like anybody who'd run around who hadn't run for 38 years, telling everybody he could tell, I'm, I'm walking. And they say, yeah, we, we noticed. An amazing story. But the key here is, is that there's no magic incantation. There's no, Jesus got the order of the words right that magically sort of created this space in which a miracle could occur. It is the word of God himself. And that's what we need. There are moments for encouraging words from brothers and sisters in the Lord. There are moments from professionals who understand the depths of our lives. But there is a moment of transformation that comes only when the God of the universe speaks into our lives and says, rise, take up your bed, and walk. So, what happened to this guy after he got up and walked? Well, we read in uh, the rest of the story, this is in 10, 10 to 17, it's actually a very humorous account. And I'll, I'll try not to laugh too much. So anyway, now it was, the, it was the Sabbath. Now that's a very important, it's very important to remember this whole episode occurred on the Sabbath. So verse 10. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, it is the Sabbath and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. Now just stop right there. This guy hasn't walked for 38 years. He's pretty excited. And they're saying, uh, hold it. You can't do that. But he answered them, the man who healed me, that man said to me, take up your bed and walk. So he said, that guy over there, he, he talked to me, he said, get up and walk, and that's what I'm doing. Whoa, isn't it wonderful? They asked him, who is this man who said, take up your bed and walk? And the answer of the guy is sort of beats me, I have no idea. <laughs> now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn as there was a crowd in the place. Imagine that. Imagine that. You've just been healed. Somebody comes up to you and says, you can't do that. You can't. It's not that you couldn't walk. It's you couldn't carry your mat. <laughs> Notice how religion can stifle the power of God. Human guidelines guised in religiosity. I mean, they can't even see the glory of God. It's right in front of their eyes. It's walking. <laughs> it's walking. So afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you're well. Sin no more that nothing worse may happen to you. Now, that, that's a very interesting conversation. And here's one thing that we get out of that. When God transforms you, particularly as he changes your mind, don't go back to that place you were at. Don't go back to that place. Okay? 
hear the word of the Lord. Don't go back there. So obviously the conversation included Jesus' name. Verse 15, it says, the man went away and told the Jews it was Jesus who healed him. Oh, by the way, his name is Jesus. And this is why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But here's the verse I want you to see. Here's the words I want you to see. But Jesus answered them, my father is working until now, and I, too, am working. Jesus' words are clear. His ministry, now remember, we're reading Jesus' ministry in life, but there's Pentecost in between. And here we are in the 21st century. Jesus' words are clear. His ministry continues today, and we know this because the guarantee that is provided through Pentecost. The day when the Spirit was poured out on flesh, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead now abides in those who name the name of Jesus Christ as Lord. And Pentecost guarantee is that Jesus, who we see authoritatively recorded in the Gospels, is the same Jesus who continues to do the same work of transformation today. He is doing it in Singapore. He is doing it in Jakarta. He is doing it in Tokyo. He is doing it all over the world. That is the guarantee of Pentecost. That's the answer to the question, so is this for today? Yes, it is, because of Pentecost. Early in my ministry, and that was a long time ago, I was a young pastor near the Midwestern city in the U.S. of Chicago. I got a call at our office, this was before cell, cell phones, got a call that uh, a little girl was uh, deathly ill in the hospital. And so I went to the hospital to visit the family. The family was a new family. They'd come to faith in Jesus Christ. They had a little 10-year-old girl who was in the hospital. The mother had just come to faith in the Lord, and uh, there she was looking at her little daughter. Her little daughter was 10 years old. She was on a bed of ice. She had a shunt in her brain to relieve the pressure on her brain. She had a disease that was called Ray's syndrome. It follows uh, uh, chicken pox in little children. It's similar to spinal meningitis. The doctors were not happy with what was going on. Their prognosis was that the next 48 hours could mean her death. The mother thought, as a new Christian, that I was the pastor. I could come just and pray the prayer of faith and everything would be fine. The father, he was a new Christian too, but he wasn't quite so sure. So he had fallen back on his old crutch before, and he was drunk as drunk could be. And he wanted to have a fight with me because... My God was stealing his daughter. You know, one of those kinds of moments where, you know, I, I didn't learn this in seminary, okay? <laughs> and uh, so I did my best and I prayed. And I must admit to you that I prayed a prayer that was perfunctory. I don't know if it got to the ceiling and just sort of bounced off <laughs> because it was perfunctory. Uh, I, I didn't want to get in a fight with this guy because he's bigger than I was. And uh, it, was a, it was a tough moment. So I went back the next day to see what was going on, good pastor that I was, and uh, I brought a young college intern with me, and uh, we walked into the room, the doctors and nurses left. Uh, fortunately, the man had uh, decided that uh, he didn't want to have a fight with me, he he asked forgiveness for being such a jerk, and I said, you're right, you're a jerk. And, you know, <laughs> no, I said, thank you, I said, thank you. And, um, you know, I said, well, how's, her name was Kelly. I said, how's Kelly doing? Well, you know, it isn't getting any worse. Well, that was good progress. All of a sudden, on the side of me, this young intern falls on the floor, and he begins praying loud. So all the doctors and nurses, they, they leave, and here I am, the man of God, with the young guy and two people, mom and dad, who were scared. And I decided, I better get on my knees too. <laughs> and I, I, I began to pray. Now, we didn't pray long that day, but we prayed loud. Whole hospital heard. And we left. 
Next day, came back. Right before I left the office to go to the hospital, I get a call. And it's the mom on the phone. And she's screaming, my daughter is healed! My daughter is healed! Now let me tell you what happened in that moment as I was on my knees with my young intern praying. Um, I have prayed and believed in healing my entire life. I've seen people transformed from alcoholism, drug, I've seen it all. I've seen people heal of cancer, I've seen it all. I've prayed for it, I believe I can pray because Jesus' kingdom is with us. I believe that we can pray and I'll trust God. So in that moment I prayed, but it was, it was one of those moments where the Lord came to me and asked me a question, and actually the Gospel of John asks this question on a regular basis. So do you believe I am who I say I am? And it was as if the Lord said to me as I was praying loud that day, said to me, you know, Byron, you, you, you're a Pentecostal. You believe in this stuff. You got all the biblical verses. You know how to argue this. You've seen me heal. But my question to you is, do you believe that I am the healer for little Kelly today? And I said, oh, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Because I was still in that moment where I must admit to you it was perfunctory. Because I'd done it before. And because I believed it. But I'm here to tell you today that little Kelly, I went the next day, saw Kelly. She's sitting in my bed, talking to everybody, shunts out of her brain. And the doctors are coming in and they're saying, this is highly unusual. <laughs> uh, of course it's highly unusual. They said, now it's going to take, you know, spinal meningitis, when you have that, Ray syndrome, you lose motor skills. So they said, she's fine, she's going to be fine, but it'll take three months for her to learn how to walk again. She walked out of that hospital in three days. So here's the reason I say to you that Jesus is still in the business of walking into your pool of Bethesda. The promise is my father is working to this very day and I too am working. Because of Pentecost, we can believe that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead flows through our lives now. We can believe that this narrative that we have seen in the Gospels testifies to the Jesus who comes to us by the power of the Spirit and does exactly the same things he did 2,100 years ago. So I want you to bow your heads right now, ask for Pastor Kong and the musicians to come. I, uh, I don't believe in uh, any kind of work up to anything. I believe that the Spirit of God is walking through the aisles here today and he is asking people who are in prisons like the Pool of Bethesda, it's a prison of your own making. I don't know what that need is, but Jesus does. And I believe that in this moment right now, even as I pray, I believe that you're going to hear words from Jesus that are meant just for you in a language that only you and he understand. I want you to listen. He's passing your way. He's walking right by you. He's standing over you. And he's saying, do you want to be healed? Lord Jesus, in this group of thousands of people today, there are certainly those who can identify with this story. They first heard it and saw it in front, of you, in front of them as this beautiful dance, typifying 
bondage and freedom. They've heard a story about a man 2,100 years ago who you healed. I pray, oh God, in this moment right now that you would come and you would speak a word of transformation and deliverance to those who are in this house that need to hear that word. May they believe that that word is for them. May they base that on the fact that you are the God who is with us. You are the God who knows our deepest needs. If you went into the pool of Bethesda 2,100 years ago and spoke to a man who'd been invalid for 38 years, convince these folks here today that you're walking into their pool of Bethesda too. So in the strong name of Jesus, I proclaim healing to sweep over this building. In the name of Jesus, I pray, O oh God, that you would fill this place with healing power. May it come from the cross of Calvary and your atonement. May it come, O oh God, with the power that raised Jesus from the dead. May it come, O oh God, to fill this place with your presence that transforms people who never dreamed that hope was a possibility again. Fill this place, O oh God, in this moment. In this moment, I pray. Pastor. Amen. Let's just give the Lord a big hand. What a presence. What a power. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I, I like Pastor Lynn to come. Pastor Lynn, where are you right now? Pastor Lynn, we, we've been praying for Jonas. For the last two and a half weeks, Jonas is in ICU. He's now in the high dependency unit. How old is Jonas, Lynn? He's 13. 13 years old. When Jonas was born, um, he had problems. The doctor didn't give him more than a few weeks, but he survived to 13. And then they got to do a bladder reconstruction. And two and a half weeks ago, we started praying. And then the operation got complications and they got to do a second surgery. So what's the latest? Uh, um, so, <clears throat> Pastor, we really need to pray for his bladder to heal and the intestines to start moving, no obstruction, because he was obstructed. So he had to go for the emergency second op. Yeah, and this morning, he was vomiting Yeah, he was pain. vomiting all of a sudden, yeah. Actually, you shouldn't be here this morning, you know, but she, she wanted to come and to tell you the good news of, of Church Without Walls. How many of you love Pastor Lin? Amen. Uh, yeah. I mean, she worked so hard for, for us, for the church, for our vision. We must pray hard for her. We must support her. Yeah. So, Prof, I'm going to ask you to pray for Lin in a moment. But we want to pray for San too. Now, many of you don't know, Tuesday she has a major knee surgery. Actually, she was in pain. <laughs> you didn't know I'm going to tell people, right? You're like, yeah. She, she has been in pain for three months. The doctor wanted a knee uh, surgery at the beginning of October. And then she said, no, I, I need to be here for the Global Pentecostal Summit. So she bore through her pain. And uh, her, at night, her knees swollen like a watermelon. She had difficulty climbing up. But she's just a trooper, you know. And so she needs a surgery. So Monday night we end. Tuesday she has a surgery. So let's pray for a miracle to happen. And the end of the month, end of this month, she has to preach in a big event in Indonesia. So she got to get well. So can we all stand up right now? I'm going to ask Prof. Byron to pray for these two wonderful sisters. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for my sister's young son. Lord, I pray that in that moment right now where it seems as if nothing can go right, I pray, oh God, that you would fill this young man with restoration. May the same power that raised Jesus from the dead flow through this young boy. I pray, oh God, that you would let him know that you are his healer. 
I pray you would astound doctors. I pray, oh God, that all that is wrong with his inside, you who made him, would remake him better than new, oh God. In Jesus' strong name. I pray for a pastor's son right now, oh God. I pray, first of all, that you would guide those surgeons. I pray, oh God, that you would make everything complete. May their skills be enhanced by your power, oh God. And we pray that the recuperation would be amazing to everybody. We pray, oh God, that we be fully prepared to preach that meeting in Indonesia in a short period of time. I pray pain would not be your experience. I pray depression would not be your experience. I pray, oh God, that you would speak to her in the middle of her pain. You would speak to her, oh God, words of hope and healing. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. Let's Amen. give the Lord a big hand. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask all the, I want all the ZSs, all the pastors, and more importantly, the global scholars to come and just form a line right now, just across the aisles. I want all those of you, two areas, you're sick in your body, or number two, you're struggling with depression. I want you to come because we're going to pray and believe God for a miraculous healing. There's a healing anointing tonight. Hallelujah. Why don't we just lift our hands while they take the position. Let's just, I need y'all to spread out a little bit. Can we just pray in tongues for a moment? Everybody just pray in tongues for a moment. Those of you with cancer, you can come to the front. God can heal throat cancer, lung cancer. God can heal nose cancer. God can heal stomach cancer, breast cancer. This morning, some of you ladies struggling with lung cancer, uh, with breast cancer, be healed in the name of Jesus. God can heal uh, cancer in the colon, cancer in the pancreas, cancer in the prostate, be healed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Let's just pray, pray against it right now in the name of Jesus. God can heal inoperable tumor in the head, be healed in the name of Jesus. God can heal even right now. He can heal lymphoma, leukemia, Hodgkin lymphoma. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God can heal heart disease. You got heart disease come to be prayed right now. Palpitation of the heart, irregular heartbeat. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God can heal hypertension. You got high blood pressure come right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. God can heal eczema, skin disease, skin problem, precious problem. Come right now, receive your healing. God can heal sugar diabetes. You got diabetes? Come, be healed in the name of Jesus. Arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. On the cross, Jesus took every infirmity and He bore your physical pain. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be healed of pain right now. Oh, if you got irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, be healed in the name of Jesus. Some you got intestinal pain. Some you got polyps, polyps in the intestine. Cervical cancer, be healed in the name of Jesus. Right now, be healed. You got kidney problem, liver problem. Come to the front. Receive your healing today. Receive your healing today. You got eye disease, cataract, glaucoma. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Those of you that are ringing in the ear, be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you here this morning. You got depression. You're feeling down. You got panic anxiety. You wake up with cold sweat. You're struggling with post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD, come. Come and receive prayer this morning in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you, you hurt yourself with fractures. Final problem, 
spinal pain, L4, L5, be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come right now. Come right now in the name of Jesus. Come, let's just worship the Lord. Let's just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. I need all the board members come and help me to pray if you can. God wants to heal you. You cannot sleep well. You cannot get into deep sleep. You cannot go through a night with deep sleep. Tonight, God wants to heal you. Just come right now. Come in and be healed in the name of Jesus. Let's just begin to pray in tongues for a little bit more. Everybody just pray. Pray for our brothers, our sisters. Somebody here, your family member is recovering from a stroke or you have a stroke. You cannot really move your body. Come, come and receive healing. Or come and pray in proxy for your husband, for your wife, for your family, for your parents, for healing to happen at home. There's a healing anointing this morning. God is here to heal. I want you most, Lord.
come. Let's stretch our hands towards all our brothers and sisters who need prayer right now. Just pray in tongues for one minute, shall we? Shudurya lakarabahadya. Shudurya lakarabahadya. 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 Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in especially depression. God will give you oil of joy for your morning. Hallelujah. The spirit of, of, of joy will come upon you. Spirit of praise for heaviness. Shuduria lakaraba, that you might be the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He will be glorified. Shuduria lakaraba, hadia lakaraba, hadia. We pray for depression to be healed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shuduria lakaraba, hadia lakaraba, hadia lakaraba, hadia. Suduria la carabahadia, la carabahadia, la carabahadia, la carabahadia. Suduria la carabahadia, la carabahadia, la carabahadia. Suduria la carabahadia, la carabahadia, la carabahadia. Suduria la A lot of people on the right need prayers. If not, the leaders can go to the right side. That a lot of prayers. People are waiting for prayers. Suduria la carabahadia, la carabahadia, la carabahadia. Suduria la carabahadia, la carabahadia, la carabahadia. Hallelujah. Closer to you, Lord, Spirit of life, flow into my heart. How I need your presence, Lord. How I need your presence, Lord. Spirit of hope, draw me close.
but can you just stay for 10 more minutes because so many of our brothers and sisters, they are needing a touch from God, they are needing healing from God. Why don't we stretch our hands towards all those in the front just for 10 more minutes. Let's just take a moment, just pray in tongues for them right now. Many are getting healed right now. Many are getting a touch from the Lord. Shuduri ala karabaha dari ala karabaha dari ala karabaha dari ala karabaha dia Shuduri ala karabaha dari ala karabaha dari ala karabaha dia Shuduri ala karabaha dari 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 ala karabaha Shuduri ala karabaha dari ala karabaha dari ala karabaha dari ala karabaha dari Shuduri ala karabaha dari ala karabaha dari ala karabaha dari don't stop, don't stop, just keep on praying, just a little bit more. Stay focused, church. Shudri Allah Karabaha, Jari Allah Karabaha, Jari Allah Karabaha, Jari Allah Karabaha. Shudri Allah Karabaha, Jari 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 Allah Karabaha. Shudri Allah Karabaha, Jari Allah Karabaha, just a little bit more. Shudri Allah Karabaha, Jari Allah Karabaha, Jari Allah Karabaha, Jari Allah Karabaha. Let this be a cry from my heart, pouring out a sacrifice of praise. Let this be a worship from my heart, in my Very quick last prayer. I need all the global scholars just to come back one more time. Just form a line one more time. Because we have many of those uh, THN pastors, our Harvest Network pastors, they need an impartation and anointing for you. Some of them are leaving after today. So can you just, all those with blue lanyard, can you just come right now? Just look at your lanyard. If it's blue, just come out right now. Let's give all the THN senior pastors a big hand. Just need y'all to pray for them. Hallelujah. Just come, just come right now. All those with blue lanyard, just come. Amen, 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 amen. Just go ahead and just receive prayers right now. Hallelujah. Let's stretch our hands towards all those, all the senior pastors that have come a long way. So let's just pray for them. Let's pray in tongues. <laughs> Shuduri Allah Karabahadia, go ahead and pray. Shuduri Allah Karabahadia, Allah Karabahadia, Allah Karabahadia, just lay hands on them, just lay hands on them in the name of Jesus. Shuduri Allah Karabahadia, Allah Karabahadia, Allah Karabahadia, Allah Karabahadia.
we just give the Lord a big clap this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give him praise, give him praise. Woo! Somebody go, woo! <laughs> Amen. I just want to thank all of you for an amazing, amazing service this morning. Your stayed with us. Wasn't the perform? I mean, weren't the performances amazing? Yeah, all oh, that. Why don't we just give all the performers a big hand? Amen. 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 This morning, we just want you to know that uh, we have one more day. Those of you that registered, tomorrow we start at 9 o'clock in the morning. And then we're going to have a grand finale right here in the night, but only for those that have registered. So if you have not registered, I do not know if there's still any room for the night. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, but so you, you can ask your leaders. But we're going to... I'm going to make one announcement that is after this, there's a special lunch on the Hall 601 at the Members' Lounge for all the scholars and the scholar attendees and the THN pastors. So, it's, so all the members, you, you fellowship elsewhere, but that area is specially for our guests today. I'm going to ask one of the most amazing global scholars in the whole of Asia, and he's now the professor of ORU, uh, R. Roberts University. And his name is uh, Professor Wong Suk Ma. And in fact, I'm going to ask Wong Suk Ma and uh, Professor Julie Ma, both of them, to come up and just, y'all say hi to them, right? Hallelujah. So where is, uh, where is Professor Julie? Are you here? Yeah, let's give. Can you please give them a big hand? Church, it's a high honor for us to have this, this couple here. The two of them are two of the most brilliant minds in theology in the world, period. Pentecostal or non-Pentecostal. Uh, Professor Julie Ma won an award for excellence in her research on women in Pentecostal, Asian women in Pentecostalism. And she spent, listen to this, 27 years in the, in the 27 years in the Philippines in the mountains among unreached people I'm very thankful to God that he has been using us people like us we are humbly continue to serve him we are very thankful to God and I saw, I'd like to express Reverend uh, Kongi and uh, Son for their wonderful hospitality. You know, what cannot express? I cannot, so I feel just overwhelmed for all their kindness and you, their love. We are very thankful for you. Thank you so much for having us. Prof, Prof Wong Suk Ma, when, when we heard, I mean, when people in Asia heard that you're coming, they could, I received texts, they couldn't believe it that you would actually come to Singapore to speak to us. You're so respected and we, we are so honoured that you are here with us. You're one of the most brilliant minds in the whole world. <laughs> can, can you please say hi to the people and give thanks for the food? <laughs> right. I think food is important. I just want to uh, share our overwhelming sense that we are standing in a very particular time, very special time, that God is raising the churches all over the world, but very specially in Asia. Because in Asia still, less than one out of 10 knows Jesus. Africa, it is more than 50%. The world average, almost three and a half people of, uh, from every 10 person knows Jesus. So there is a much work to be done, but I can see that uh, this church symbolizes that the Asian spirit-filled churches are called to shape the future of global Christianity, and we praise the Lord for that. So much, as much as you have been 
feeding us and spoiling us uh, with all the wonderful food and hospitality. You have been feeding us with a new challenge, new hope, and new confidence because the Spirit works today as the Father, as the Son work today as well. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, giver of all gifts, including lives, including gifts, and I pray that you dismiss us with your grace as we are sent by the power of the Holy Spirit to the world that you love so much. Pray that you bless the food that we are going to share together and in our midst, we'll find Jesus Christ offering himself and all the gifts to all of us. So we bless you, we thank you for everything we receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone will say, Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Church, service is over. The fellowship have just begun. Thank you so much. Those of you that sign up for GPS, tomorrow is our last day. God bless. Go!